Although this video is going to talk about nuclear war and the subsequent radiation and gamma ray fallout, cancer that results from that, and why fermented foods can help with those issues, I also want to appeal to you a couple other reasons why you should eat fermented foods. Things such as diabetes, medications, heart disease, COVID, vaccinations. We'll discuss a little bit about how fermented foods can benefit in regards to those things as well. Welcome to the Intuitive Body Foodie Network, changing the way you think about food. Hello. One of the things that I have been contemplating of late is at what point do crazy people in the world start using nuclear weapons? You know, there's two different types of nuclear-based weapons. There's the ones that destroy everything, and then there's the ones that just kill people and animals and keep all the structures in place. If I was a leader, wanting to take over another country, I would kill the people and the animals and keep all the structures in place because I would want to bring all my people in to take over that city. Unless, of course, my agenda is simply to eliminate or genocide humanity or the bulk of humanity, then I don't think I'd really care who and what I killed. There's a radiation and gamma ray fallout from those two types of missiles. Thermal burns from infrared heat radiation would be the most common burn experienced by most people. So if just one little particle hits your skin, it's a, called a localized beta burn or a flash burn. But if your whole body is exposed to that, well, essentially your skin just melts. So where does that leave someone like me who's living in a major metropolis that might experience one of those missiles hitting my city. As a prepper, <laughs> what can I do to prevent that? I don't have a bunker. You know, you need mega feet of concrete or you need one of those full body lead suits that they put over top of you in an x-ray. Well, I don't have one of those either. Or you can be submerged way underwater, but you have to be there for at least two to four weeks to avoid radiation and gamma ray exposure. Well, I don't have a submarine <laughs> to live in either. So, and, and you probably don't have those things either. So how do people like you and me, the, especially people that live in the city, how do you and I prepare for something like that? Well, when it comes to third degree burns, I, I still don't have the answer to that. Maybe a lot of aloe vera and, you know, special gauze to wrap your body. But are you going to be able to do that when you yourself are suffering from third degree burns? Probably not. I have had second degree burns from sun tanning. I was a foolish teenager at that time trying to impress a guy and I thought maybe if I went out and got tanned I would look better in his eyes and as a result I got second degree burns. I know, I've done foolish things. <laughs> uh, we'll never do that again. The only way that I could cool down my body with second degree burns was by taking multiple baking soda baths in cold water because baking soda cools the skin but I don't know do you want to do that when you have third degree burns and do you want to do that if the water is also contaminated with radiation probably not so again I don't have the answer to that but I do have some sort of response that you know if you are suffering from second degree burns as opposed to third degree burns baking soda baths, aloe vera, and lavender essential oil in a carrier such as maybe coconut oil or borage oil or vitamin E oil. Those things can help with second degree burns. And what about the cancer that is inevitable as a result of radiation and or gamma rays? Something within me knows fermented foods are not just about microbiome. Fermented foods are pro-life. What does that mean? It means they keep your body alive. So my father-in-law recently had a heart attack, well, a stroke. He had diabetes, he had high cholesterol, he was just in a really bad way. And they've got him on all this medication. And he's been on it for about mm, a year or two now, and now he's starting to throw up because over acidity in the stomach, he's never been one to eat fermented foods. So I've just introduced him to milk kefir and fingers crossed so far so good. The reason it's working is because, you know, as a diabetic, as somebody on a lot of medication, he has poor microbiome. So it's helping to build the microbiome to counter not just the medication that he's taking that's 
destroying his stomach lining, but all the other factors as to why he started having to take this medication in the first place. So there's just basic health, one reason for fermented foods. Have you had COVID? Have you been vaccinated? You also need to consume fermented foods because the COVID virus kills the beneficial bacteria in your microbiome. And yes, my father-in-law has been vaccinated and he's had COVID. You know, studies have shown that heart attacks and cancer is oftentimes the result, not of COVID, but of the vaccine. Well, fermented foods can help your body combat certain things to do with all of that. But coming back to radiation and gamma rays, you know, as fallout from some sort of missile that might one day inevitably hit my city, and if not my city, then maybe it's gonna hit yours. What does fermented foods do when your body has been exposed to excessive radiation and gamma rays? I have a, an article I'm gonna link in the description box below because Spirit guided me to this yesterday because I asked the question. I've been asking the question, God, <laughs> like what do I do? Because I might not be at the heart where a missile lands, but I might be close enough that I end up with second degree radiation gamma ray exposure. So what, what do I need to do? What do I need to be? What do I need to have? What do I need to know, receive, and perceive to help me survive that? Not only survive, but thrive. The article's about miso, which is a fermented food, and the effects of miso on radiation, exposure, and damage. Because radiation and gamma rays will kill healthy cells. And when a lot of your cells are killed, well, you're prime for things like cancer. Miso was proven to protect people from radiation and gamma ray damage, not as a result of consuming it after you've had that damage, as a result of consuming it well in advance of being exposed. Speaking of miso, I'm going to be making, for the first time, my own homemade miso. You can make it from soybeans and other legumes such as chickpeas. I'm gonna do both. And yes, I'll create a video on that. So what if you do get cancer as a result of radiation and gamma ray fallout? Will miso help you? Like, is it only miso that will help you? Are there other fermented foods that can benefit you just as much, if not more? Yes, you can consume really any fermented foods, and I would highly recommend that you eat a wide spectrum of different fermented foods and beverages, again, well in advance, like, why not start now? And in response to what if you do get cancer as a result, well, fermented foods will still help you in your recovery from that. Will it save your life? It might, I don't know. It, I guess it depends on what other underlying health issues are you also struggling with prior to that. I think overall, you know, the fact that it's pro-life, it's for life, I think you'll have a pretty good chance. You know, I'm not a doctor, so, you know, whatever with that. I have had so-called medical doctors come on this channel and chastise me, telling me that it's unhealthy to eat a diet that is 85 to 90 percent fermented foods. They can say whatever they want. I'm trusting the information that's coming to me because I know it's direct spirit that is speaking to me. And in the almost 58 years that I have been alive, it has always given me really good advice. <laughs> so why wouldn't I trust that? What percentage of fermented foods should you eat? Well, I'm not advocating that you eat 85 to 90% like I do. However, that said, if anyone tells you that it's unhealthy to eat such a high ratio or percentage of fermented foods, please let me be living proof of otherwise. Because I have been on this fermented food diet. It's a lifestyle, really. I have been eating this way for about 10 years, a decade, and like, I don't know, I look healthy, I feel healthy. I mean, it's not to say I don't have health issues, but that has nothing to do with fermented foods. And in fact, sometimes fermented foods have helped in the case of fibromyalgia, for example, because the Beneficial bacteria consume a lot of the sugar, which lowers the sugar content of the foods that I eat. Technically, it's an anti-inflammatory diet, which is beneficial for fibromyalgia. I don't get the flare-ups in the same way that I used to before I upped my diet of fermented foods to such a high percentage. 
when I was just, you know, randomly eating the odd little bit of fermented food here and there, I had flare-ups like monthly. Where I am right now as a result of my diet, I might get a flare-up once every three or four years. I don't know about you, but I'll take that because, I mean, I'm used to living in pain every day anyway because the muscles are tight and that's painful, but I'm used to that. You acclimatize to the pain, your threshold, your pain threshold increases. But when you get that acute attack, which is what I call a, a fibromyalgic flare-up, it's excruciatingly painful. Now I have a whole host of remedies that I use for that and I have videos that I've created on that which I'll link in the description box below. Those videos might have some content that might provide useful for you or someone that you know. But coming back to the radiation and the gamma ray fallout, intuitively I already know that this diet of such a high percentage of fermented foods is beneficial in so many ways. When I read that article it was just yet another affirmation for me as to why I eat the way that I do. If you are new to ferments, introduce them slowly. I've created videos on that. I'll link them below how to slowly introduce fermented foods into your diet and how to slowly build up what foods to lessen as you begin to introduce your fermented foods. It's all in the video. I'll just link it below. Read the article and decide for yourself. One other thing that I want to say on the note, in particular of things like milk kefir, if there's radiation and nuclear fallout, how do you think it's going to affect cattle or goats or sheep or animals that produce milk? Do not rely on fresh milk. Always have a backup storage of powdered whole milk, powdered full fat cream, coconut milk even, okay? Have a backup supply. Those things will last for 10, 20 years in their packaging providing they're not opened. So if you don't have access to milk anymore, fresh milk, at least you'll have that. It doesn't taste the same. Trust me, it doesn't taste anywhere near the same as fresh milk, but it will still provide you with milk that can be fermented, which will feed your beneficial bacteria. Because not only do you need to have fermented foods in your diet before such a thing as nuclear or gamma ray fallout occurs, you need to maintain it during that process. So do you have enough salt? One thing before I go, if you read Revelations, it says, woe unto mothers that are pregnant with babies or have little children in the end times, and you're, you've got milk coming and colostrum coming out of your breasts already because it tends to come out in the last couple months that you're pregnant. Do not feed your baby milk from your breast that's full of radiation. Express the milk, ferment it, and then feed it to your baby because this is going to help counter the radiation that you might be producing in that milk from your own body. I'm in editing and I'm kind of scratching my head because it suddenly dawns on me like I haven't really thought about food storage. I mean I store a lot of my food in food grade buckets and glass containers but that's not going to yield protection against nuclear fallout so I don't have all the answers yet but I am starting so I mean if you have suggestions <laughs> feel free to leave a comment in the section below not just for my benefit but for other viewers as well I would greatly appreciate it this whole thing about radiation and gamma ray fallout and the need for fermented foods to protect you from that you know even if you're somebody that just found out you have cancer and you think that you're going to have to go for chemo you need to start consuming fermented foods now to help your body heal and recover from the detriment of chemotherapy because chemotherapy kills all the good and bad cells in your body so in order to have good microbiome, first of all, you need to build it. And in that process, you also need to feed it and you need to maintain it. We'll talk about that in a future video. So that is it for today. Obviously, there's a whole lot more research that I need to do for myself. And if you're interested in me creating more videos like this, then obviously I need to do more research for you as well. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And until I see you in a future video, ciao for now.